What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Talking Bull Podcast, where we bring you the nerdy news you needed to know or might already know and want to get our thoughts on the matters. I got D Rock here with me. What's going on, D? How you doing? Doing great, buddy. Nice. Doing great. Nice. I, I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure we got that. That was good. Keeping the can tradition alive. I like it. Uh, so we are back after a little bit of a hiatus. We tried to do one a few weeks ago, but some idiot forgot to hit record. It was this. Yeah, video. what a jackass. <laughs> so, but uh, it was probably our most unhinged one because we were just all over the place with everything. And I think there was a 10 minute rant of me giving shit to Warner Brothers as per usual. I, the reason why that one was was a big rant like it was was because we had gone a few weeks without doing anything and yeah. so much stuff had come out. So we, we had no like... No, no guideline. <laughs> no, we were just all over. But today, we have a guideline. So today, we are going to talk about Alien Romulus, Venom, and all things Summer Game Fest so far that have been announced. And if you are joining... Well, never mind, because that's tomorrow, so don't worry about it. Anywho, so starting off with Alien Romulus, what did you think of that trailer? I was hyped. Yes. Uh, from the very, very beginning when this movie was announced, then I was even more hyped when that teaser came out. Mm -hmm. And then when this trailer came out, I'm like, oh my fucking God, it, let it be August, baby. Please just let August get here. Although I want to enjoy the summer, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. But, I but you, I man. love this movie, man. It looks so good. I am so, I am so hyped for it. So I, I, I like Alien. I've always liked Alien. And the fact that we're getting Alien with a little bit of respect is, is great. Because God knows we've watched it nosedive. But uh, after that teaser, I, I was already sold. But then I think the, the director was like, this is a mash between Alien and Aliens. And mm -hmm. this trailer very much confirms that. There's a lot oh, of yeah. slow motion where it's like they're, they're trying to figure things out. What's going on? And then it ramps up. But then it slows back down. And then it ramps back up again. And I'm like, Dude, that was all in a two-minute trailer. And it was very, very cool. And we get very little details of what anything is going on in this ship. And, and the face huggers swim, and it's the most terrifying thing on the goddamn face of the earth. Yes. I love that they're leaning into uh they're leaning into the face huggers in this one. They're mm -hmm. making them scary. You know, I mean they've yeah. always been scary, but it's like, oh man, they're they seem like they're gonna be a huge part. Yeah. Um I uh it, sorry, God. What was it? Uh, I was going to say, I am just so excited because, like you said, you said slow motion. I thought th at the end, the no gravity of the trailer. Mm -hmm. Did you see that shot? The no gravity with the acid in the air or in the no gravity floating? Bro. So, so I'm playing it right now, and it looks like they're investigating a spaceship or uh, yes. a space so, station type of thing. So right? they are... Uh, I can't think of the word for it, but they're they're salvagers. Salvage crew, okay. People, All right. Yeah, they they go out and find things, but hey, you know, we could find this probably make some money off of it. You know, we you know because uh, it's good. It's from like a a planet, I guess, where like people are poor and they're just kind of stuck there. Okay. Which you kind of see at the beginning when she's laying in bed with yeah. like the the her looking out the window and stuff. But um, yeah. So they're a salvage crew who stumbles upon the ship, and I feel like this ship has something to do with alien covenant okay. since we never since we never got a proper we're never going to get a proper sequel to that mm -hmm. and you know see where that ends i think this ties into it because there's a lot of like people are like you know they think they saw the cryotube stuff from the end of covenant okay. when you know what i'm talking about because yeah, yeah. it had like all the embryos and shit mm -hmm. and I saw a breakdown where someone pointed out that um, the facehuggers don't come out of normal eggs. They come they come out of like uh, like these man made eggs. Now, like so, with... it's like somebody. What's up? I have a theory. I just was waiting to. Yeah. So, so that's in the trailer. So we're wondering like who's doing this? What's happening? So and I think I think it's the ship from Covenant. So what are the odds that? the uh what is the company that um runs everything uh, in this? Wayland yutani what are what are the odds that they are the ones who sent this team 
to salvage this thing through whatever means that they connect them with, right? To once again do the testing of the aliens. Always the case. It's always a because, possibility. And especially I would not... with like this very much looks like their type of station. You can see all the old tech that looks like new tech that's I love an alien. Yeah. But the whole they're not a normal egg thing very much leads credence to that, right? Well, that or it could be I, I his name is right there on the tip of my fucking tongue, but Michael Fassbender's character. Oh yeah. Like Michael. I think it Michael? has something to do <laughs> Is it? It no, might be. It's Bishop. Is it uh, Bishop? No, that's no Bishop's from two. <laughs> he's he's a he's like Bishop. That's yeah, what, yeah, I'm an idiot. He's a he's a he's an android. Um, yeah. but I, and, yeah, I mean it's it's got it has something to do with them. But there's an android there's a, in this movie too, right? Yes, he is. Because that alien black. in the one scene is like bursting out and does glowing behind it. Yeah. So yeah. the so it. Basically, it hasn't been confirmed. Confirmed, but they confirmed it in the trailers that that the the black guy is uh, the android. At least, oh, okay. I, as far as I'm aware. I mean, that's how it comes off, and other people because there's a the thing he does with his eyes. Oh yeah, I'm watching the scene right now where they're in the water. Yeah, and so, that thing jumps uh, out of the water. It, oh man, it just it looks great. And there are rumors. I think I mentioned this the last time we talked about this movie, but there is rumors that uh big chap is coming back is but that that's the nickname for the xenomorph from the first alien movie the one that they yeah. fucking rocketed in the space i mean <laughs> if anything's gonna survive in space it's this dude yeah and that's the thing they they go dormant if you read one of the books there's like a whole thing where like they've just been in dormancy until someone showed up and was mm-hmm. like hey oh hey what is this thing and then they wake up and you know all hell breaks loose <laughs> i just i love the aesthetic it just feels like we're getting back to it's Damn. going to be both. It's going to be uh, a, a mixture of the old, like the old new technology. You know what I'm talking about, and yeah. then like, and then also things looking like they didn't come in it. I'm down for that, man. And uh, Prometheus. I actually just saw something on Twitter earlier about the TV show that they're doing for FX, mm-hmm. where the director or the, the I think it's the director um, or the producer, or some one, one of them. Uh, he is. Uh, the, uh, how they're they're going to the more like old like grungy kind of look, you know, like yeah. the first Alien movie and Aliens. Yeah. So they're and, trying to stay isolation. away from like the new look. And isolation. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God! Such a good game. Such a good fucking game. Goddamn. Right. <sighs> yeah, we'll That's never get a proper sequel. They just want to give us some bullshit VR shit. Yeah, there's some bullshit VR shit I want to talk about later. But anywho, yeah, so Alien Romulus <laughs> looks like it's very much going to be, like, the prey of Alien, of bringing it back and just being awesome. So Bro. I cannot wait for that. So there's this there's this YouTuber I watch. It's Alien Theory on YouTube. Check it out if you haven't. Um, he mentions in his video, like, and, and he made me so happy. He's like, he's like, I'm at a point right now where he's like, I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. He's like, all these people complaining about, oh, Disney's ruining this. Oh, fuck Disney. He's like, I don't fucking care anymore. They've been proving time and time again with 20th Century Studios that they can put out good fucking movies. Mm-hmm. They did it with Prey. They did it with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which is fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Did, did we need it? No. I thought it was great. I enjoyed it from start to fucking finish. And I was like, I kind of want to watch that again. I don't think, honestly, like, like, other than the three just disjointed Star Wars movies. I don't think Disney has really been doing that bad of a job with anything that they've required. No. I like don't think so either. I mean... Some of it's hit and miss, some of it's not great, but like it's not absolute garbage. Yeah, I mean it's, it's all entertaining. It's intolerable. It's all what you think. So I think yeah. I think especially Star Wars fan base is just overblown hyped everything. Yeah, but so. see, what I what I like about these is it, this isn't your traditional like Star Wars nerd pop culture kind of movies. You know, mm-hmm. these are just like, well, I, mean, I guess Alien is kind of pop culture ish, but you get what I'm saying. They're not like these mainstream big time movies. These but are movies like that the you know. Alien itself is more of the the big thing. Like everyone, for the most part, knows that that's the Alien. They don't know anything about it. Yeah. True, yeah, if you're just kind of surface level. Which leads me to another thing. We can get away from Alien after this if you want. I'm oh, sorry, cool. but these are just thoughts I've had. I was telling somebody the other day, uh, 
which I think we talked about this on here too as well. I feel like we do. I do this. I say the same shit a lot, but cool, I do too. I think it was when we were talking about the defunct land YouTube channel where they talked mm-hmm. about uh, one of uh, Disney's alien rides that they had. It wasn't Xenomorph themed, but it was about like an alien that gets loose yeah. and yeah. kills people in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Well, originally that was supposed to be a Xenomorph ride, but they couldn't get the rights to it. I think or something happened. And they just made it something else. Now that they have rights, I'm like, bro. Can we do get it. a fucking Xenomorph ride? Yeah, Can we do it? Awesome. And I, I I, honestly would not care if some, somebody walked around the fucking park in a Xenomorph costume wearing a princess dress. Just leaned into it. That would be hilarious. It's like, um... I, love, I, feel I, like, I feel like I've seen that in an animated... Someone did yeah. that. So, so what, it, was like a, it was like an image when Disney bought Fox. It was like, yeah. well, the Xenomorph's a Disney princess now. <laughs> and for me, it, it the way I feel like people would get mad at that or the way people got mad about them adding a Xenomorph to Fortnite, you're ruining the Xenomorph. It's a skin. I'm like, I don't fuck care. Put up, just lean into it. Doesn't make it any less terrifying. Dude, we've had <laughs> Alien 3, Alien 4, Covenant, AVP 1 and 2. You can't mm-hmm. ruin the Xenomorph much more than you have in a lot of those movies. I guess I'm gonna be. I, I like. I like those movies. Oh, don't I like them? Except I oh. like most of what they do in some of them, but like except for Requiem, you you can't like you can't wreck it. It's already wrecked. The franchise. I wreck there. it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, no, I feel you, man. It is what it is. They just they just people are people. Yep, and I'm just so, hoping that this movie. Like knocks it out of the fucking park. I hope right. that this movie does so good that they're like, yeah, let's keep them coming. Also, you got but Covenant they and Prometheus. Like, you can't wreck this franchise any more than it already has. Mm-hmm. And I enjoy those movies, but I get they left a lot to be desired because yeah. they weren't necessarily going to be for trying to be alien movies. You know, exactly. you want to go cry about a franchise? Go cry about Highlander. There's a franchise that's dead in the water. And speaking of franchises about... that are dead in the water, Venom, uh-huh. The Last Dance. First of all, let's just talk about the title. Fucking terrible. This isn't a goddamn fucking bring it on movie. Why is it The Last Dance? That aside, I have been a defender of Venom. Not a fan of all the things he does in his movies. Same with the Eddie Brock character, but after watching this trailer, a 3 minute and 14 second trailer, I might add to you. A minute and 14 second longer than Prometheus. I can no longer defend defend this thing. It's fucking terrible. You already know my opinion on these movies. (laughs) And I've been a starch defender. It's not the Venom we want, but like it is, it's just a fun popcorn-y type of movie where that just happens to be Corny's a word. Corny is a word. It's like a buddy cop movie (laughs) without the buddy cop thing, but like, good God, what, what, oh my. Sony. Bro. (sighs) Stop. Just (laughs) stop. The moment Tom Hardy started talking in the fucking trailer, the moment that man opened his mouth as that character, I rolled, I audibly rolled my eyes. I don't know how my eyes made the noise, but I know they made the noise. And I groaned. I was like, uh, I, remember, I was laying in bed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, let's watch this trailer. And I was like, oh my God. Really? Mm-hmm. And then the whole, like, we are too long. We are too long. <laughs> That joke is too long. It would have been funny, but it was too long. They killed oh, the bit. So bad. They killed the bit. All right, but before the- I even badmouth any more of this, can we stop with the ten second teaser at the beginning of the fucking trailer? No, oh, bro, I'm so sick of it. I hate it because it oh, always gets fuck, me. It's annoying. I'm always like, is this the trailer? And then it's like, oh no, this is the, this is the trailer Why for the trailer. Why do I need a stinger for a trailer? <laughs> I fucking hate it. Like, I understand it's, so it's for whatever analytics to put it on, like, uh, YouTube or whatever. But once I click it, it should just roll past that. Yeah. I have a skip intro option. Like, uh... It's just it's so <laughs> stupid. It, like, it also sometimes ruins the, like, little reveal in the trailer. Yep. Yep. 
Like, it's like, oh, they found us. And then it goes to some other random thing. And then halfway through the trailer, it talks about they found us. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah. So these idiots are going to. And like, oh, why is. So instead of Eddie Brock just being a down on his luck news reporter because he did some bullshit, he's now just walking around in cargo shorts and Hawaiian t shirt. That's his whole shtick now. Yeah. And so, in the trailer, I see that I think, I think, I, I feel like Marvel finally talked and was like, hey, no, you got to retcon that shit. Look, oh, yeah. we did that for y'all, but mm-hmm. we got to retcon. We're not, we're not letting no. this into the universe. No. I'm pretty sure it shows that the fucking little symbiote mm-hmm. that came up in him is back in the Sony-verse. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that's oh. how they make the, like, the, the toxin... Talon and all the other uh, symbiote things from the the the, the I want to say it's the found life foundation or something that has like these five symbiotes that they force oh in that, I uh, thing oh I thought that uh, those came from their home planet like they caught them all when they came down okay I, I missed that both. all right well, I think that's where Talon's yeah. coming from because I think Talon's in this too okay because if you're gonna well, shit on if you've already ruined Venom and Carnage. You might as well ruin the rest of them. True, true. So. Um, w- another thing I don't fucking understand is, is again, Sony just fucking doing Sony things. Why is Mordo in this movie? Because uh, they just can't cast anyone else. Also... Wh- why? That is the most confusing shit I've ever seen. I didn't even realize it was him, so to me it didn't really fucking matter. <laughs> I was just like, okay. My biggest crap I saw... is that I hate the way Venom fights. I hate what do you he mean? Launches Eddie out and uses him as a what, weapon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like that. I I just don't like anything about these fucking movies. I don't like Venom's personality. It there's a way to do it to make it funny, and they don't do it right. But like again, you've ruined the dynamic of what Venom and Eddie Brock are in the last two films. So this is just it is what it is. How did they handle Venom in Spider Man Two? Spider-Man 3? The game. Oh. A hell of a lot better than this. Like, what was his characterization? Without giving spoilers, I haven't played it. I'll probably never it's get to play it, same, but for anyone else. Like, well, it's, I can't really say it without spoiling anything, so I'm just not going to say it. But it's a lot better than this. But is he silly? Like, does he have, like, no. is he, like, comedic? No. But, okay. Venom, but the thing is, Venom can be comedic. When it's yeah. good, he can it's be comedic, this... but not like a not like a fucking dipshit. That's my problem with this version of Venom. Is that like he's just it's just he's it doesn't feel right. It's like yeah, Venom. It's, it's off. Venom's personality to me, maybe this would be leaning more to Carnage's. But whenever I think of Venom's personality, my brain the only way I could describe it is how. Freddy Krueger is in the movies where the later movies where he's like, like he's fucking, you know, he, he's, he's, you know, he's evil. He's mean, mm-hmm. but he could be funny with like one liners still. Yeah, he's, he's got probably, a sense of humor. More doing carnage is like, cause carnage is a sociopath. Car- with, yeah. Car- but, broken. and he's not, I don't know. I just, I feel like, I don't know, man. I just, I just don't like this version of Venom, and I, I just, oh my god, this trailer, this trailer. No, but just, I, the fact that you not, said you were like, no, it's not good, <laughs> man. I just, and I like the first Venom. The second one, I hate it. I, I don't hate it. I just, no, I hate it. It sucks. They just ruin Carnage and ruining this, and I just. The only cool thing about this is put they put the symbiote on a horse, and it looked cool. See, even that, everyone lost their minds about it, and I saw it, and even that did not impress me. But I think it's just because it's these movies, and I don't want to like anything about it. So yeah, when I saw I just, it, I was like, oh my gosh, well, here's them trying to bring people in. <laughs> They're, I, they made a badass Venom horse. Yeah, so apparently the, the symbiotes have found him, and they're now coming to kill him, or take him home, or, I don't know, eat him for lunch. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. The symbiotes in this fucking franchise are once again so mischaracterized because of fucking Sony that I'm just like, what did we do with this movie? 
Like, in the first Can't fucking it, movie, they didn't even say the right thing. <laughs> so. What do you mean? Like, oh, it's Tox the... and not Talon. Oh, okay. Either way, like, who cares? They're gonna ruin it. Hey, what does it matter if it's the last one? Venom the last. Like, you could think of another movie. Like, how about Venom Lethal Protector? Like, would you really want them to, to call be... him that? What's that? Would you really want that? Would you really want them to waste that title? No, but like, it would make <laughs> sense of what this movie seems to be going for, which is him being the lethal protector. I guess, yeah. I'm just like, stop giving us fucking Spider-Man. I mean, uh, Venom movies about Spider-Man. Stop. Do- <laughs> we've been here. We've done this. Stop yep. doing movies without. The hey Sony, if anyone at Sony's them. listening, sorry, I keep inter- talking over you. I'm nah, sorry, good, Sony. If anyone's listening, just can a uh, Craven, just can it. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants to fucking see that movie. The trailer doesn't even look well, good. Well, Nothing about it. it. Yes, and I'm part of the problem. But I, I have mean, a theory have... on that. I have a theory on that. The fan character, Spider-Man fans and comic book fans are going to see these movies because we want to see how bad they're going to wreck them. Then no one else sees them, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I saw I mean, Morbius. I saw Madam Web. <laughs> no, wait. I, didn't I mean, I... For Madam Web. I went for Morbius. I went for Venom. I went for Carnage. And I went for Madam Web. Did I see Carnage in the theater? I think I might have. Did I see... Did they re-release Venom in I theaters? Okay, then I just, I just, oh, no, no, I watched it at home, and it took me, like, three days to watch it, because I couldn't get through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but, yeah, man, I, I mean, like I said, I'll go watch them. Like, yeah. I, I'll, I, I'll pay, I'll use my free ticket I get with my fucking <laughs> subscription to the movie theater, yeah. because, you know, that's what I do. Mm-hmm. But, man, I, I, I tell you right now, I, I do not enjoy them. I do not enjoy these movies. They're not good. I think the last the last good superhero movie Sony did was the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah, and look how much shit that got when it first came out. And then look how much love it got when they brought him back in uh, always No Way Home. I love Spider-Man and the Amazing Spider-Man franchise. So. Oh, me too. I love Tobey Maguire's. I like, love did I Did I think they did some missteps in that movie? Absolutely. Is it still better than anything Sony put it out? Absolutely. Yep. My only complaints about both of those movies that I've said before, but I've gotten over those now. Like, now I appreciate them even more. Tobin Maguire was a little too nerdy. Um, yeah. How about this? I liked Tobin Maguire's... Not nerdy, okay. I liked Tobin Maguire's Peter Parker. His Spider-Man could have been a little more, you know, a little more... Cocky, you know, yeah. jokey. Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker was too cocky. But I like the Spider Man. He was better in the second one. In the first one, I think they were trying to get away from being Toby. The, the, and I think they went yeah. a little too far. But the second one he definitely got better. But Andrew's Spider Man is still the best Spider Man. Yeah. I, I like it a lot. He, I love it when he fucks with the people. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Speaking of things that are fantastic, Friday afternoon. They showed Summer Game Fest, the video. I don't know what they call it. Summer Games Fest. It's a whole weekend thing now because we don't have E3. I miss E3. But this is what we got. We got Sony went first a couple days before that. It was not a good thing. But we did get a cool reveal of Astro Boy out of it. And some other stuff that I don't remember. That's how meaningless that thing was. I think then, Astro Boy was the only thing that excited me. Yeah. Then Friday... Um, we had that, and it was a lot better. It was uh, much, much better. Still not top tier, but they did kind of tell us to like quash our expectations with that. So, they, you know, I was hoping for Kingdom Hearts four, but pff, it's apparently a little bit of ways out. So it's fine. It is. What yeah, it we is. got another uh, 10, 15 years. Exactly, exactly. I don't. <laughs> that, but still, all right. So Summer Games Fest, Jeff Keighley coming out, acknowledging the fact that the industry is kind of and not a great place sometimes and i really appreciated that because i'm surprised he did it at all so that was kind of cool uh kind of putting a more emphasis on indies and smaller titles 
saying that yes, these can be a thing. So it's pretty cool. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, I, I was uh, I was out and about while it was airing, but I was kind of keeping up with the occasional Twitter post while I was out when I had service because uh, there's a restaurant we go to, and when I enter that fucking building, my phone doesn't work. <laughs> You're just a so, black hole of nothingness. <laughs> Yeah, so that for a while there, I couldn't really keep up, but I saw some stuff, and Anthony had sent me a few things, and there, there was a lot of cool stuff that was announced this weekend that um I'm looking forward to. There were some uh, things that, mentioned... were, that weren't announced then. I was like really confused why they wouldn't have been in this thing. I guess they probably just didn't want a page to be in it. Um, what, like, what were those, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Unless we're going to get to those eventually. The thing remastered and uh, the stuff about, uh, I keep calling it the wrong thing. Starship Troopers Extermination. I don't know why none of that was at the, the event and not mentioned during it. Or even the trailer oh, I thought, for the thing. I thought Starship Troopers was announced today with IGN stuff. But I, I just thought it was weird that it wasn't on the thing. And also, the, the oh. thing remastered just tweeted out. Yeah, like, why would they tweeted out the... part of Summer Game Fest like that? They weren't a part of anything Maybe they... as far as I know. Maybe they just didn't have the money, but they took the opportunity to, like, hey, they're announcing games this week, and let's announce this with it. Yeah. Now, uh, on the topic of the thing real fast, um, I saw the trailer. Is that the remaster? I thought we were to be getting, like, updated now graphics, but it's like they just, like, HD'd the PS2 graphics. Yeah, because it's, uh, so it's, it's, what's the, it's the remastered, and then what is the other one? Re... A remastered is just when you put the fresh coat of paint on, is it not? No, because for Combat Evolved, it was uh, it was the it was Combat Evolved Remaster. I don't remember what it is. Either way, I it's cool. I'm let's get it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. We got a release date on that, or does it just say coming soon? I don't know. I my brain says October, but I think something else I saw was October. There's a lot of October. Yeah, um, maybe it was uh. That that uh, that persona looking game metaphor, and Dragon okay. Ball, and uh, the other game I'm gonna talk about in a minute are all October. Uh oh, see, look right here, IGN. Wait, this is June. Oh, this is yesterday. IGN posted about the the thing. Ah. Uh... Oh wait, that's not even the fucking video. I don't know if I find the video, I'll give you a release date. All right, for so the while thing. while we're while we're, isn't it posted? It's in the Discord, isn't it? I know we caught the thing. It should be in there. Oh, okay. I didn't know the thing was posted in there. Yeah, not not in the not in the channel one, but on our personal one, it should be there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, while he's doing about that, uh, so I have the list of things here that were announced. We can kind of go down it and give our opinions on what uh, we feel about them. So they announced okay. uh, Lego Horizon Adventures, which is coming to the PlayStation, PC, and the Switch. Which is just mind blowing because <laughs> it fits into PlayStation's overall strategy for releasing things. And I actually screenshotted a bunch of things that it clarified Sony's like stance on how things are released and what and like what way they will go when they're released type of deal. And I was just like that's kind of fascinating to me. Um, so it's like, why is um, is it coming to like the main console, but like not to like Xbox per se? And it's basically because they do not view the Switch as a competitor. It's not a direct competitor to them. So the PC, the PlayStation, and the Switch are all kind of like the same thing to them, whereas the Xbox is a direct competitor to them. So that's why it's okay. Not, that's why it's going to the Switch. They view the Switch kind of like mobile. It's not a direct competitor to them. It's a entirely different thing. Um, that's dumb as shit, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's coming. It's not going to the PS4, but the PS5. They're trying to get people to move away from the PS4 to the PS5 because a lot of people are still there and they feel like putting access to Sony's tentpole games only on the PS5 will move people to the PS5. Me. <laughs> exactly. 
And I think this far into the gener console generation, I agree. They should definitely be doing that. Um, yeah, there's more on it. It just it was it was a fascinating read of just why they want to uh, do that. And then they were talking about how uh, transformative games, aka multiplayer online game, will go day and date to both the PlayStation console and PC. Uh, okay. Whereas tentpole mainline single player games will not, it won't go to any other platform for like one to two years after launch. Uh, but I think they've changed that a little bit to like six months or something like that, right? With some of these games, so yeah. mainline ones will go to the PlayStation Five and then PC, which we've been seeing with Horizon Zero Dawn now going over to the PC, God of War Ragnarok going over to the PC, Ghost of Tsushima going over to the PC. So anything like that will go to the PS5 first and then go over to thing. They want people to go to the PS5 first and then go to other places. So by putting the mainline games on there, they can get people into that ecosystem before they move over to the PC. And also uh, Lego just looks awesome. It's I like... I I think it looks really good. Um, yeah, it I like, looks fun. I, like, I can't wait to play it, honestly. I won't just because. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it's coming to PC. I could try, but I, pff, I don't have any. I'm not a Horizons fan, but it did look really cool. Um, yeah, it just it it gives more personality to Aloy and the character, and just like putting Lego in that. It like I don't know. I was expecting just a retelling of the Horizon games with Lego, but like it seems like it's its own little story with like. Lego stuff, you can dress them up in Lego skins and shit, so Yeah. I'm down. So that was that was fat. And then we got Harry Potter Quidditch Champions. Um It's coming to PlayStation Plus, day and date it releases, but which is I think is pretty cool. Um it uh it's coming out September and it's going to be on everything else under the sun. Um, but that's a pretty big get for PlayStation, I think, especially with Harry Potter people. So yeah, to put it on there like that, I think is big. Um, I might try it out if it's on Plus. Why the fuck not, right? More games to try out. What do you? What do you? What, any thoughts on uh, Quidditch? No, not really. <laughs> All right, and then we, got, really. we got we got Cliff Bust. It's the same guy who did Choo Choo Charlie, and it looks like just this chaotic clusterfuck of trying to get these little dudes out of prison and it looks kind of vulgar and fun and stupid and I kind of want to try it <laughs> I didn't I don't think I saw anything for this one like I said I I, I kind of glanced over I just kind of like like skipped through the video that the recap video that IGN mm -hmm. posted until I saw something that caught my interest yeah <laughs> this one just looks like a fun little uh they look kind of like the um What's that beat em up game where the rag doll and you throw them off the side of buildings and shit? It looks kind of like that. Oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. I, I get Sid Meier Civilization. Do not care because I do not play Civilization. But You could if you wanted because the last one is only $3 on Steam right now. That's really good. Go get that because I hear really good <laughs> things about these games that people seem to really enjoy them. They're just not for me, but you're getting They're not for seven me either. <laughs> and people are really stoked. So good for them. More games for more people. We got Street Fighter Two Year, uh, Street Fighter Six Year Two characters, uh, Terry, Elena, Mai, and M Bison coming back, who I did not know was dead because I did not play Street Fighter. But oh. hey, more characters for you to play in Street Fighter, and that's pretty cool. Um, it did so. M Bison's coming in the summer. And then Fatal Fury's Terry Bogard in the fall, and then Mai in the winter, and then uh, the Street Fighter Three's Elena is coming in the spring. Uh, then we got to look at Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero. It is the latest entry into the Budokai Tekken series, which is weird because it's called Sparkling Zero and not Budokai Tekken. But I don't care. It's fucking Dragon Ball. I love Budokai Tekken. I love Dragon Ball. I will continue to play the same fucking game 15 times with the same story. This game looks fantastic, and I cannot wait to fucking play this thing. <laughs> it, 
It's on the PS5, PC, and every Xbox. Uh, and it comes out on October 11th. I think the only Dragon Ball Z game I ever played was Budokai, and I thought it was really weird. I didn't understand what the hell was happening. Yeah, just hit but, uh, motherfuckers, and it's I can't wait to. I love Dragon Ball. And the yeah. fact that, like, the same six sagas keep bringing people back to play the same fucking game over and over again with slight iterations is hilarious to me and i love it and they just like when they first announced the characters it was like six different versions of goku and everyone's like woo and i'm like it's so funny to me that like the main roster is just five people with 16 (laughs) different transformations I mean, look at look at look at the Pokemon games. This is the same yeah, fucking right. game almost every time. Just looks a little different. <laughs> That's exactly what this is, and I cannot wait to play it. A buddy of mine actually uh, pre-ordered that massive bundle for it. Oh yeah, I definitely will yeah. be doing that. But you know, I'll play the game at some point. Uh, we got another look at Fatal Fury, another fighting game I do not play, but people are, are really excited. Um. Yeah, so if you're into Fatal Fury, you're eating good with fighting games this year, guys. Mortal Kombat was really good. Street Fighter was really good. Now you got Fatal Fury coming. Uh, you got Monster Hunter Wild. You got another look at that. Still pretty cool. So if you're into Monster Hunter, you got another Monster Hunter game coming. That was the other one at the PlayStation thing we couldn't remember. That's it, yeah. that. I, I played Monster Hunter something. I was enjoying it. It's definitely a different style of game, but I'm I'm all kind of for it. So, I played a little bit of the last one. Someone bought it for me. It was like, here, play it. Yeah. And I was like, I, okay, wasn't for me. But the older I get, the more I realized I am an old man stuck in my ways, and I only like what I like, and it is very specific things. <laughs> I like to try kind of a little bit of everything. Unless... Man, that's awesome. But I think my other problem is also I have three children, so it makes it hard to find that's times fine. when I have the time. I just want to do the thing that I know, because mm-hmm. I feel like if I try something and don't like it, I've just wasted my time. <laughs> when we get to the game, um, it's on this list. When we get to it, I will tell you a game I will not play and my biggest pet peeve in gaming. Uh, okay. One of the biggest games coming out is that Metaphor... Re Fantasio, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's basically Persona, but it's not Persona. It's gonna be fucking massive. People love Persona at this game. Looks cool. It's just I don't play them for the most part. But yeah, there you go. It is a turn-based fantasy game from people whose no, they... name I will not try to pronounce <laughs> for that. But there you go. Then we got one of the coolest things, which was Bloomhouse coming out and announcing they have a games division. And not only are they to do they have a games division, but they have six titles in active development by various studios, groups, and peoples. And this was one of the things that they were talking about was they wanted to take their like horror concept of different ideas and different things and make them into games using different studios on various sizes and that's what kind of summer games fest was about which jeff Keeley was talking about was these smaller people doing this thing to get people and games out there um oh man, there's another studio there's another studio the the creators of among us who made a shit ton of money i've also made a studio <clears throat> excuse me where they are now producing and financing a bunch of groups and people to get their games out as well so interesting yeah they're like you took faith in us we're going to take faith in you and they're now doing a whole bunch of titles with various people and that's what Bloomhouse is doing as well so when you saw this trailer it's many different horror aspects so if you are a fan of certain horror genres one of these games is going to hit for you and when I and saw they're all this, different, like they're yeah. all different, like game styles, art yeah. styles. I looked through them. I was like, "Oh, this is yeah." Like, there, interesting. There's some that are like uh, like uh, over the top ones. There's like a shooter one. There's psychological thriller ones. I, they all look very PS2 though, which is weird to me. I'm like, interesting, but okay. Yeah, there's there's so you got uh, Crystal Theater of Idols, you got uh, Grave Sessions, Sleep Awake, uh, Fear the Spotlight, The Simulation. 
and Project C. Uh, all coming at various points in the next little bit. But I'm just like, Bloomhouse does very well when it comes to different projects. So to see them branch out to games and do this instead of one big game with like one horror style, they're doing many games and giving yeah. other people a chance to put their visions out there. And I'm like, that's that's cool. Um, I will definitely check out a few of these because some of them looked really cool. Uh, I think it was yeah. Project C and the simulation that caught my mind the most. Uh, so, you know, that I, I was just, as soon as I saw that, I was so excited for D-Rock. And I was like, this is for him. Like, here's a whole bunch It'll of horror me... games you can go look at and be like, I want to try some of these. And It'll here get you me go. back into gaming. Exactly. It'll get me back into gaming, yeah. baby. So I just, I was like, that's so cool to, to do that. Because like, if it's not your cup of tea, then it's not a cup of tea. Uh, we yeah. got the DLC for Alan Wake, which looked fun and entertaining. Uh, I have not played Alan Wake 2 because I have not finished Alan Wake 1 yet. So Get on it. Right. <laughs> uh, we got a look at Phantom Blade Zero, which was pretty cool. Um, more Sekiro ninja stuff, which is pretty cool. That's all I can say because I don't honestly remember most of the thing. What else we got here? Uh, we got that Slitterhead, I believe it's called. A new horror game from <laughs> that's X. A, that's that Japanese people. game, right? Yeah. I'm try I'm just going to skip through because I'm trying to remember what it is. Yeah, it... <sighs> I think it was kind of funny. It was like, how does a game look so good and so bad at the same time? And when you skip through this trailer, you kind of, you kind of get that feel. But, no, I saw it too because it, it also just looked like an old game too. Yeah. I was very confused. <laughs> it, it looks good and bad at the same time. Uh, I want to see more of it before I make my final like decision on it because it looks kind of cool. It looks like a body horror bug insect psychological thingy and you fight wasn't using this... your limbs and guns and shit. I, I don't know. Wasn't this game announced a while ago? Uh, it could have been. Because I feel like I had seen... There's another game that was very similar to this. But I think it looked better. Probably. Because <laughs> also the way it looks... Me looking at screenshots, it kind of looks like Parasite. This uh, yeah. this mo this manga uh, anime. And anime. Uh, where it's kind of the same thing. Where your their bodies transform into these weird things. And, you know, they turn into, like, weapons. You know, yeah. like... Yeah. You know, like the Simbi is supposed to do. Slitterhead was first announced back in 2021. That's That was it. Yeah, that damn it. Yeah. Uh, Slitterhead reunites Toyoma with Silent Hill composer Akira. I'm not going to butcher that last name. Whose most memorable work may be the Silent Hill 2 music zone. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Yay. Then we got to look at Dune Awakening. The survival MMO, which looks... Very good. Um, it's all a little I bit. Need to it watch cool. Dune before I get to play Dune. <laughs> I need to watch <laughs> Dune too, just to be able to watch it. Um, yeah. Sandy is a uh, big fan of it. Uh, she just finished the first book. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, she uh, she hadn't read the second one yet. She hadn't seen the second movie, but she. Loved those i enjoyed the first one it i it didn't hit me like it did for everybody else it's not a bad movie but it just i don't know it just didn't i need do to anything. finish the no. first one it's not that i didn't enjoy it it's just that it was 5 a.m when i was watching it and i was starting to doze off and i was like i need to be awake to watch this movie so i yeah. finished it but this is basically a universe without paul atreides atreides Basically, it's an alternate reality where this dude dies or something, and it fucks everything up. So, it's an alternate reality Dune? Yes. Okay. The story takes place in a world where this guy does not exist. So, it's, it's everything that happens different because this guy is dead. Okay. Then... I don't know, I'm pretty sure these are in order. Then we got the thing that I jumped out of my chair for called Lily over, and I was super excited because they announced Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Retest Rewind. 
I was so pumped because this is the, apparently, it's Digital Eclipse. They know what they're doing. It is yeah. a fighting game in the old school classic arcade look using the Power Rangers. And they are using Robo Rita from the once and always Power Rangers special that came out this year for the anniversary. I was going to ask, isn't that a more recent thing? Yes. With her? So this is Robo Rita going back in time to change and rewrite history to fuck up things with the Power Rangers. And did you watch the trailer? Yes. Dude, there are so many cool concepts in this. The whole bike level, the whole transforming Megazord part where you like do things. There's a fight on a coaster. Uh, there's a fight with that guy who like can take his head off and move around. There's a fight with the Megazord in like first person mode where you're punching the eye guy and I'm just like I am in, let's go. I feel like I feel like companies saw uh saw how good the uh, uh the turtles game was well, and they're like hey the, i'm pretty sure this is they did turtles did they not oh is it the same people well that's awesome i'm pretty um, sure it's this i'm gonna i'm gonna google it right now but i'm pretty sure what it's is this gonna be on because i, I want to play it probably yeah right now at the time it just said um prior like you know do it on switch or uh sorry i not switch what's the other one uh pc um steam that's it Boo! No. <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, they were like, it's coming to everything. Uh, they did the Cowabunga collection. Oh, okay, okay, cool. They're responsible for a lot of the, like, the Mega Man collection, this is the Afternoon, Street Fighter collection, SNK gotcha. collection. They redid the Aladdin and the Lion King one. Um, yeah, so they did, they did, a, they, yeah, they did the Cowabunga collection. So, they, I, I'm all for them. Um. So what's funny is, is that was announced as like a you know like a side scroller kind of beat 'em up game. Mm -hmm. Uh, fucking GI Joe side scroller beat 'em up was announced today. Really? I did not see that. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I saw that. I was like, huh. It's like two of those. <laughs> Yo, Joe. I'm down. Let's go. I can use a little bit more side scroller games. Also announced, Ukulele is getting like a reskin. Oh, Yuka Playly? I mean, Yuka Replaylee? Good try. <laughs> you, yeah, that. And I'm like, that's awesome. I really enjoyed the. I, I had Ukulele. Uh, I really enjoyed the, the bit I played out of it. So to get a reskin out of that is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, shit, There's some climbing game that looked cool that I will never, ever touch or play. So if you're into that, you're all for you. Uh, there's a game Wait, called, what is it? Uh, Care. Care. But it's spelled C-A-I-R-N. It's something to do with climbing. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Then they not saying uh, game Wonder. Um, Wonder Stop. It looks very cool. Uh, it's the guys who did the Stanley Parable and Gone Home and Tacoma and shit like that. Um, okay. Looks like a fun little game that always has a twist because obviously that's how these things work. Uh, looks like this warrior opens a coffee shop. Uh, she thinks she's at peace, but she's really not. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, it no. Cool. You have to watch the trailer. It, was, it, it looked really cool. Okay. Then we got a look at Sonic X Shadow Generations. This is a half remastering with Shadow added to it. So think uh, Mario plus Bowser's Fury. Oh, okay. It is Sonic Generations remastered with adding Shadow into the equation. And I'm like, that's cool because uh, did you play... Sonic Generations? No, I wanted to, though. fucking awesome. Is Fan Sonic Generations... Casting. Is that the one where they had the little animations for it on YouTube? Uh, no, that was Sonic... 4? No. But Mania. Oh, oh Mania. Yeah, okay, it was Mania. Yeah. Mania. I was like, I'm blanking 4, but no, I knew it was Mania. 
No, Sonic Generations is the one where, like, old school 2D Mario teams up, or Mario, 2D Sonic teams up with 3D Sonic, and they go through their different worlds, either in 2D or 3D, to stop this guy, thing that broke through the, you know, thing. Yeah. This little messing up all of creations, and they team up and work together. It's pretty cool. And they're adding Sonic to it. And then... Shadow. Yes, Shadow. <laughs> uh, so these are in order. I was incorrect because now going down the list, I realize. So, uh, Valorant, this is kind of where I dozed off at the end. <laughs> so I missed the good <laughs> last <laughs> part of the thing. But apparently, Makes sense. I missed nothing, so it doesn't matter. Uh, they announced that Valorant is coming to the PS5 and Xbox consoles. Um Excuse while well, my stuff just falls off my desk. It's okay, nothing got disconnected. Awkward. Anywho, yeah, Valorant is coming <laughs> to the consoles. So if you are into Valorant and never got to play it because it's on PC, now's your chance to play it. And you get a beta coming on the 14th. For some reason, I always thought it was on consoles, and I just didn't know anybody who played it, but now I know why. Honestly, I have no fucking clue what Valorant is because it's just another shooter to me that I don't need to play. I know Andy Cortez plays it on uh, from Kind of Funny. That's about all I know about it. A lot of people play it and they enjoy it, so good for them. You know, more shit on more stuff to play, I'm also for. Uh, We got Hyper Light Breaker. Um, 3D sequel to Hyper... Oh, what the hell? Oh, this is Hyper Like Breaker. It is a sequel to Hyper Like Drifter. So if you're into that, there you go. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> we got Delta Force is coming back. Uh, it has two modes, a free-to-play mode, and then a single-player mode that will be the remastered of the Black Hawk Down based off the video game by Ridley Scott. Interesting. And I'm like, you know what? I like tactical shooters, kind of like HUD stuff. And really, Scott's Black Hawk Down is a great fucking movie. So, maybe. Then we got a cool look at this game called Nerva. Which is a chronicle of the story of a young woman bound to a curious wolf cub following a traumatic experiences with the dark forces. It's very much like one of those pretty side-scroller like, uh, what is the one with the little white thing? The white little animal. People are, uh, the Whisk. Willow of the Whisk. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very much that style of game. Which okay. Which I enjoy. I was playing, what was the, what's the first one? Ori in the Blind Forest. Okay, I, see, I thought Ori, but then I was like, okay, maybe that, um, I, I that's, was, okay, I yeah, it's Ori. Brain's yeah, yeah. turning, I'm trying to think of, like, yeah, yeah. So that is definitely... Uh, it looks, it looks beautiful. Um, and I, I kind of, I, I don't enjoy that a lot of games look like that now and they kind of have the same aesthetic going with that, but this one definitely looks really, really good and looks like a nice, like, you know, emotional, fun, like story driven type of thing. So I definitely check that out because I, I yeah some of those are fun but I just I find a lot of the new stuff looks a lot like that so um, I mean there's a point where everything had that we had had a, had a similar art style and it was just kind of like mm-hmm. a lot of indie games had this like not finished look to them I guess mm-hmm. or like I don't know it's, it's an art style that people love and I'm same like, like I don't... Cartoon Network animation style that they were using that's my example of it. Where it's like everything yeah. like a Cartoon Network for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a fan. There's a name for it. I just can't think of what it's called. Yeah. Uh, we got another look at Black Myth uh, Wukong. Which is, I'm pretty sure, the story of, like, uh, the Monkey King. Yeah. And... I've been... Hi- I've, I've talked to you about this before, ever since we've seen it. I've been hyped for this game since we've known about it. Um, I just hope that I can play it. 
because I'm pretty sure it says it's an action game, but I'm hoping it's not a uh, Dark Souls s game because I suck. I'm at so I'm so sick of that being a thing. I'm so yeah. sick of like the fucking Souls like games. Everything oh everything's gotta be Souls like. I, I, I they're not enjoyable. I it makes me not. I want because it's like I'm hoping this is more like a God of War. Yeah. Than it is a Souls like. Because I am terrible at them, but Same. I really want to play some of them. Like Bloodborne. Uh-huh. I wanted to play and finish. But eventually, I just hit a wall and suck. That's how I am right now. Lies I don't remember where I was. and everything. I was having fun with that. I hit a wall, and I am stuck. <laughs> I fight <laughs> this stupid fucking clown on a runway. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I'm right there with you. I, I, don't, I don't like games like that. And it bothers me. It's even like, I hate how like when you get a new game announced, oh, it's a Souls like, or it's a rogue like, or a ro- a rogue light. And I'm like, rogue like, I don't even. And real time strategies are words I don't want to hear for gaming ever because I just I don't. They're not for me, and I don't want them. Exactly. Same. As soon as I'm I right see there, a cool I'm like, eh. ro- a game is like, I see this cool game. It's showing a cool thing, and then it's like it's a rogue like, and I'm like, bye. Like, I'm <laughs> out. I'm out. the same way. I'm the same I way, am man. Out. But yeah, this oh man, I, I love when they do different interpretations of the Monkey King and the uh, like the Journey to the West. So it says it's an action role playing game. So we will see. I'm I'm just hoping it's cool, and then I can play it. It comes out on um, in August, so. We'll find out if I can play this game. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's that's pretty much the gist of it when it comes to that stuff there. But we did get some more other trickle news down. Uh, Starship Troopers Extermination uh, is getting a release date on August 16th. That's like 16th. You mean Hell Hell Divers 3? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Um, speaking of which, we need to play Helldivers. Uh, but also, it's getting a single-player yep. campaign. Cool. Yeah. Um, and and it's starring Casper Van Dyne. Saw that. Uh, so, I'm excited for this game. Uh, I, that they, because it, it, it's been in beta since, like, what, last year, I think? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is its actual, like, 1.1 launch. Yeah. I'm excited. I'll give it a shot. Um, the fact that it has a I campaign, love... which automatically means that like you can play it now without having to worry about anything else, so and having to find people to play with or, or yeah, seeing exactly. out with randoms, it's, yeah. It's got it's you know twenty five missions. Got actor Casper Van Dyne. Um, I'm hoping it's not just a retool of the levels because sometimes that can be really bad. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see, like review wise, and you know what they say about it. I'm hoping it's a very good story. It's not just kind of yeah. shoehorned in. Cause sometimes they are, but Starship Troopers is very cool. That's why I yeah, Divers is fantastic. It's one of my favorite. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, sci-fi movies. <laughs> and I've seen all of them, regardless of quality. The only one that exists to me is the first one. <laughs> oh no, no, no! There's uh, Marauders is cool. Uh, the four. No, wait, hang on. Which one is it? There's just, there's, two is terrible, three is okay, yeah. and then I think there's Marauders is four, then there's the CGI show, uh, the Roughnecks, uh, which is awesome, one of the best early CGI shows ever, and then there's a couple more animated ones that are also pretty good, in the style of like Resident Evil uh, animation. I thought, I thought all the sequels were CGI except for. The second one. No, there's, uh, I think there's two more live action ones, but I could be wrong. I know there's one definitely called Marauders because they go in mechs. Yeah, it's CG. Is it CG? I thought it was live action. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, now I feel stupid. I'm looking. No, you're I fine. I swore this was live action. 
Alright, go on to wiki. Oh, wait! Oh, you're right! It's Starship Troopers 3 Marauder! How did I miss this? Okay, maybe there was- maybe- I thought there was another live-action one, though. I remember this! I- okay, I remember this poster now. So, is Marauders any good, or is it just, like, bad? Is it cheesy? It's so bad it's good type of thing, okay. I want to say. Gotcha. Okay, so there's only three live action. I was wrong. I thought there was. Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about this one. That was my bad too. <laughs> yeah. Then there's two. There's, if I'm not mistaken, Traitors of Mars is the prequel to, um, Marauder, but I could be wrong. Oh, okay. I also like that this game is um. First person. Yes. That, I, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Roughnecks, a Starship Trooper uh, Chronicles, 36 episodes. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. It's the same style of, like, Reboot and Beast Wars. And yeah, I, got, I remember that fantastic. show. Yeah. Fan diddly tastic. Also, uh, no more room in hell is getting a sequel. That looked really cool. I saw a little bit yeah. of that. That looked really cool. There was stuff missing from that list. I just realized. Uh, we got a very cool look at Star Wars Outlaws, uh, which uh, got me more hyped to play. And then we got uh, with that they announced that. Because I'm pretty sure they... We're going to see more on Ubi's presentation on Monday. But they were talking about it. And what I thought was pretty cool is it's going to have like a GTA level um, thing with the, the, the Galactic Empire. Where the more bad things you do, it escalates what level of the Empire comes after you. Really? Yeah. They announced, I saw that today on Twitter. And I was just like, that's cool. That's a cool system to implement. Because it's the first, like, open world uh, Star Wars game like this, right? And you're, you're, like, you know, bounty hunter, rebel scum type of thing. I don't even know if you're in the rebel. You're just bounty hunter type of thing. So, to have that where it escalates to each level gets you another thing. And it looks like there's some space travel battles as well. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll see more on Ubi Forward. Um... Uh, we got this. We got another look at Once Human. Another one of those weird looking um, games. But what I really wanted to talk about was Batman Arkham Shadow. And I mentioned a franchise, something. Oh. What the fuck segue? Earlier I was pissed off because it was a thing locked to a thing. This is coming to VR. And that is ass, because <laughs> we're finally getting a good new Batman game with an original story from the look of it. The trailer looks phenomenal. It's uh, Roger Craig Smith, I believe this is the right order of his name, voicing Batman again. And this fucking thing is locked to fucking VR. And you can hear the audible groan of people in the Games Fest studio who were like, fuck. Because <laughs> they wanted this game. To uh, not be on VR. I don't want to hear it because you were giving me shit when I got upset about the fucking Alien game being locked to VR, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, the stupid shit. Don't lock games like this in VR. It's a complete don't opposite thought of my head because I was so pissed because I was like, I want to play it. <laughs> It's stupid. Uh, I mean, I get why they do it. It was my same argument to Alien, right? You want people to play VR. So what do you do besides Alien? You give them fucking Batman. <laughs> but I'm like... I don't have that kind of money. I don't have like 12 grand to drop no. on a fucking console and a headset. Or a new fucking PC and a headset. <laughs> I'm not fucking playing this thing. I can't. F fuck, dude. Yeah, it comes to the Meta Quest 3 in the fall. Ooh. 
I'm pretty sure I was still also pissed about Alien coming to the fucking VR headset, too. <laughs> mm. Uh, I just, whatever. Oh, Tears of Metal. Looks very cool. Although, Tears of Metal. it has the words I hate, which is roguelike, but it also looks very cool. Gross. Yeah, I'm not a fan yeah. of the words that, but... Yeah, it looks awesome. Uh, just like a little hack and slasher with like this weird animation style. Um, that I am very down for. And I just want to play it. I was like, what the fuck is that noise? Someone just pinged at you. <laughs> I was sending you the trailer for it. <laughs> There was one more thing I wanted to talk about it because it pissed me off. And I just want to see if it's on this list. No, it's not Battle Crush. It's not Mech Break. Oh, that, that looks cool. Need to rewind. Deer and a Boy. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Oh, this does look cool. Um, Killer cool. Bean. Hack and Slashy. Did you see Killer Bean? Killer Bean? Yes. You're a bean that is an elite killer. Out for revenge, and it's stupid, and it looks great. I, all oh, oh, time. I did see something about this. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw there was a squirrel game too, and I made the joke. I'm like, is this oh, about seen, the yeah, squirrel? Yeah, we saw the, we saw the squirrel with a gun before. Oh, I was like, I was like, is this is this game based on the squirrel that that cop shot at for throwing an acorn at him? <laughs> God, that was so bad. I I saw that. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Where is the game that I want to talk about? Cause this game looks like it was made by the creators of Rick and Morty. It's basically it looks like it's, a, it's, it's like one dude in a studio or something. Uh, it looks like a it just looks like an Adult Swim game. Oh, Outer Sloth is the name that the Among Us people made to do the all the games. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was trying to think of it while I. Okay, so there is a game called Battle Aces. And I just want you to really quickly. Oh, I, I saw it earlier. Okay, so this is my biggest pet peeve in gaming. When you show a very cool, very awesome, either anime or CGI fucking trailer that looks so fucking dope. And then it turns into a real-time strategy bullshit or a fucking mobile game. Did you see the clip that Greg Miller shared of Tim? Yes, and I watched Andy? that live because I, I watched their coverage of it, and yeah, I was right there with them. I was, I was Andy, man. I fucking left the room, dude. I was fucking pissed because it looked so cool, and then they showed it, and you were like, oh, "I hate you so much." That guy comes out, uh, uh, whatever, whatever the fuck, whatever aces was like. He's like. Blake, whatever Ace is, is an RTS. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you fucking assholes. I was, I was so mad. Because uh, what was that big game with Kate Upton in the advertising? I have no idea. Ah, uh, fuck. It was like Kingdom something. Anyways, it, was, it had the same type of like cool fucking animation. And then it's like, pfft, this bullshit. Yeah, that's I wanted to talk about Battle Aces because it just pissed me the fuck off. Yeah, and no, I saw that. I was like, yeah, I was like, oh man. Yeah, I was so pissed. Uh, then there, there was a whole bunch of shit that I missed that I just none of it has any interest to me. Uh, Skate is getting a new game. So but... that they had uh. They had uh, Craig Robertson uh, do something for it, which turns out he's actually a really good skateboarder, I found out after that. Yeah. Oh, shit, that's dope. I think I, I saw that I posted. But one of the big things, and I think this is we're going to end on this because I think that's the last story I wanted to talk about. Let me just check that one post that I did earlier. Okay, yeah. So this is the last thing we'll talk about because it pertains to us pretty well here. Um, Power World. Is getting its first major expansion. Finally. Pals. And a whole new island. Islands. Called. Yeah. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. So, yeah. I don't it's remember very... what it was called. 
Japanese-inspired looking island with new pals, new subspecies, a new faction, a new leader, uh, a retooling of the building mechanics, complete overhauling. Thank God, because that shit was so hard to build. I Several hated it. Several building restrictions moved. Uh, maximum number of bases is increasing. New structures, uh, workstations. Um, so new stronghold people can attack. Uh, large scale battles you can now do. Um, there's a new PvP arena coming, which is pretty cool. But then, the biggest thing is dedicated Xbox servers, which me and D Rock have been asking for since the game has come to Game Pass because we had to jump back and forth between each other's thing and it sucked ass because you either have a bunch of shit and you have other shit or you have other stuff and you didn't have other things. And yeah, we had to keep starting over, you know, yeah, it, it sucked. Now if I will pay for the server if it's not expensive. And we can play. We can stream it together. We mm -hmm. can get. I have other friends who will hop on and play with us. And you can um, jump on whenever you want. You don't have to wait for the other person. Yep. So you can go on there, do a little bit of stuff, hang out, do your thing, and dip. I'm all yep. for that. Each person can have their own individual base if they want, their own shit. It's awesome. And, and? it is coming out on June 27th, which is awesome. Because that is very soon. Yep. I haven't even deleted it from my Xbox. Oh, I haven't. It's still it's there. my third game I on there. Waiting. It goes Starfield, yep. Lies of P, and then it goes Power World. I have, a, I have a couple of different things. I don't know, but I'm about to delete Ark. I got back into Ark for a little bit, but then everybody like everybody like, went like way overboard way too fast because they got a lot more time than me. And I was like, you know what? This is just taking up way too much space on my Xbox Let me know anyway. you want to because I just put it on there and I will join you <laughs> what on arc yeah <laughs> so we're actually on we'll talk about this after <laughs> yeah well yeah so big power world update you guys know me and d-rock we streamed it a bunch of times we had a great time with it and yeah it's one of those games i've been meaning to get back into and now that they have this we can and i'm all for it because it's just having having dedicated servers now on xbox i think no, oh, excuse me, is is the best deal with that because it just it makes it so much easier to play with your friends and with people and not have to worry about who's going where, who unlocked what, what's what, and then, like, your pals aren't the best. You got to go get another different guy and catch this dude. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it just was not great. And I'm just excited and, that um I have somebody to battle bosses with now instead of by myself, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I, you, have, you just cheese it the whole time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cheesing, it's fun. And it's just another reason to step back into a game that you might have stepped away from. Because I I'm, I really enjoy doing that. Once you get back into the hang and the groove of trying to figure out the systems, yeah. once you do that, it's cool. I jumped back into Starfield after its uh, big update. And I've just been playing that now. And I am almost done. That's, I, that's, why, that's why I haven't heard from you in a bit. <laughs> playing Starfield. <laughs> 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 but anyways... Yeah, so that is so far Summer Games Fest. Uh, we will bring you uh, the Xbox Showcase news later. Oh, that is tomorrow, that isn't is it? That is tomorrow. And I will be live with that over on the YouTube channel, or the Twitch channel, broadcasting that live. But if you're listening to this, which this will go up after that, so it does not matter anyways. <laughs> yeah. I will try to be on there with you. I've yeah. made plans tomorrow because I completely forgot. But I was like, there's something on Sunday, but that's what it is. I will I, I'll try to stay home. I don't know. Let's see how tomorrow goes. It's supposed to be. It's, it is the make or break Xbox thing they're saying. So we will see what Xbox brings to the table tomorrow. Yeah. But that has been your look so far at Summer Games Fest. Our thoughts on Venom and... Uh, Alien, hope you enjoyed the podcast. <laughs> D, thanks again for hanging out with me. This time I hit record. It was great. <laughs> Anytime, bro. I honestly, for half a second, I thought you were about to be like, I forgot to hit record again. I'd be nope. like, God damn it, Anthony. Nope. <laughs> we are good to go. This time I remembered. Everything worked great. We are fine. 
And yes, the podcast will be back when it comes back. Thank you all for liking, subscribing, following, and watching and listening. I appreciate you guys. You can find DRock over on the Squid Layer on Twitch and over on YouTube at the Horror Squid, where he is soon to post new content because I'm going to make him. <laughs> Good. I've seen some horror movies recently. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You can find all of the links down below to our various channels and social medias. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. I will see you guys on the next one. Deuces. Deuces!